Hello guys, so here is that anime guy I just sketched out. I just quickly inked him and now he's done. I inked him with the Le Pen or Marvi Uchida technical pens. That's what I inked him with. And if you want to see a video on how I ink, I have one on my channel. So you can just go into my tutorials playlist and check that out. So now onto the skin. So usually what I do is I grab all of my possible skin colors, skin tones for whatever, like if I'm doing light skin, then I'm going to pull out all of my light skin tone markers and then I will choose from there. So sometimes, you know, not everyone's the same color, so you're going to want to choose um, different tones or undertones or whatever. So if you want more of like, not a dead look, but more of a cool tone, I recommend like putting a gray underneath. Like first mapping all of your shadows out with a gray and then going over with the skin colors but for this purpose i'm just going to quickly pick something out so two colors i always include are these two sketch markers can't tell if that's focused or not but that's e00 and then e triple zero and that would be skin white and pale fruit pink i don't think my camera is focusing but whatever so I always include these two. Then I also love including this one. It is called Fruit Pink, and this is E02. So I always include these. So then I also use my flex markers or pro markers. Honestly, this is okay if this is all you have. You don't need to use like a million. So here I have Antique White, Light Fawn, and Blush, as well as Vanilla in pro marker. So if I wanted a yellow undertone, I would go with vanilla, but this one I kind of want a more peachy color, so I'm going to choose light fawn and blush, because I know these two are more peachy colors. And I recommend that you have like all your colors swatched out in a color chart, otherwise it might be a little bit difficult choosing which colors you want. Um, this is antique white. I would use this if I wanted them very pale, because this is a very, very pale color. Can't tell from the nib, but it's a very pale color. Okay, without further ado, let's get on to the actual coloring. And you don't need five colors, you just would need like a light, a medium, and a dark. But I technically, if you know, if you have access to more than three colors, then I would go for it. Okay, now on to skin coloring. I color skin two different ways, and I'll show you the way I do it now, and then I'll show you the way I used to do it on the side. So the way I do it now is from light to dark. I used to do it from dark to light. And the paper that I'm using is the Hammer Mill Digital Copy Cover in the size or the weight 80 pounds. You can get buy a ream of this on Amazon for like 11 bucks I think for like 200 sheets. And I personally like using this just for like tutorials because it's really um, nice for blending. So. Let's get on to it. So I can't really tell through the camera if you can see that, but I already started coloring here. But let me just go through shadows and stuff. So a lot of people have been asking me about shadows. So this is how you can tell where to put your shadows. I want my light source coming from this side. That's where my actual lamp is. So see if I covered that. That's my lamp. So this is how you do shadows. You stick something in front, like my hand here, and the light is being obstructed by my hand, thus casting a shadow on the other side. So how I would describe this is that the light is coming from here, so that means the hair is going to be casting a shadow onto the skin because the hair is getting in the way of the light getting to the skin. So that's why we would put shadows there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and I'm using E000, pale fruit pink, and I'm just going to map in all of my shadows. So I don't usually color in the whole um, face just because I'm lazy and I don't want to waste ink when I don't have to. So I just put in most of the shadows. So let's see here. Even though it's shining from this side, you're still going to see some shadows here. So I'm just going to... Go fill that in, dum de dum And see this part where his neck is? It's kind of covering the other side where his shoulder meets his neck. 
So I'm going to be shading there. So there's nothing too difficult about this technique. Honestly, I don't even consider it a real technique because it's so easy and simple. And also just because I'm lazy, so I don't want to do anything too complicated. Oh, and also, if you have trouble blending, I highly recommend that you take a colorless blender with you. This is just the Pro Marker one. You can use the Copic one if you want, or just whatever colorless blender that you have available to you. Or even rubbing alcohol, if that's all you have. So you can put a layer of that underneath, or you can like do what I'm doing right now and just use it to blend out the edges. Now I'm going in with E00 in the Copic color. Um, you guys can just choose whatever colors you want, doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters here is what order you do it in. So I'm just putting this color on top to add some depth. Nothing too dandy here. And I'm just, you know, flicking. So if you notice that some of it isn't like blending as you would like or just looking smooth, you can just go back over with the lightest color to try and achieve a nice smooth blend. And you can also, if you don't have that many colors but you want to achieve ultimate depth, then you can just keep going over the same spot over and over and over to get like a nice deepness. Okay, now that I've colored everything, I included the darkest shadows. I'm just gonna quickly go over with my lightest color, which is E000 Pale Fruit Pink. And I'm just gonna go over and try and blend everything out again, while still leaving like most of the face white. That's about good. That's pretty much all I do for skin. Not sure if you can really see all of that, but yeah, the ink over here smeared just a little bit, like from the nose it smeared a little bit, but not much I can do about it. So since this side didn't get any sun or any light, I colored this half of the face. Yeah, see, you can see that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I did um, my light, or my dark to light. So I start with my darkest color, which is E02 Fruit Pink, and I'm going to put that over here on the side. So I'm just going to start flicking down. You would do the same thing as you did with this one. You would just start from light to dark instead, or dark to light, I mean. So I'm like totally out of it. So now I'm just going to go over that one with the second darkest color. Um, this might, this one might have actually been the darkest color, but whatever. Same thing. So now I'm going in with light fawn. The last one was blush, by the way. And with dark to light, you just keep going over the last one. And as you can see here, I'm using the hammer mill paper, and it just blends really easily, which is why I like to use this one for like marker tutorials. And then. I'm going over with my lightest color. The last one was um, E00, this one's E000, and then there you go, there's a nice blend. That's all you really need to do. And if you see that it's like not completely blended to uh, your standards, then just take a blender and just, you know, go over it. And then there you go. There's the finished coloring. Nothing special. I hope this was somewhat helpful to you, and yeah, have a nice day. Hope this helped, and happy coloring. Bye!